Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. Too many people make the mistake of trying to write a book for a million people. Write a book for one person. And that's the premise of this coaching session. I'm talking to an extraordinary client of mine who has an extraordinary way of thinking about the world and seeing the world and working with certain people, chiefs of staff to some of the most senior leaders on the planet. And I recommend she writes a book to one person. Listen into our conversation. Hi, Laurie. Hi, Rich. Well, I know we both of us are looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. And I've got no idea where we're going to go today. What would make this really interesting for you? Um. I'm so happy to be doing this because as I was sharing offline, you know, we've tried to do this for a couple of years and maybe there's a reason why it just couldn't get scheduled until today. And um, I feel like today is the day where I would really like to get some advice from you on a couple of things happening in my business. And it's just serendipitous that here, here we are. So um, yeah, I've got a couple of topics to toss out. Do you want me to just dive in? Absolutely. So, you know, from 4PC that I um, coach senior leaders and chiefs of staff. That's my space. That's my niche. Having been in corporate for 30 years at a Fortune 10 company and having walked in the shoes of a chief of staff, I really feel knowledgeable in that space. And it's a big passion of mine. So I've built a business over the last year, year and a half, serving those two populations. So I want to talk to you about my book, um, which I'm committed to writing this year. And if you asked me two years ago, do I want to write a book? I would have said, hell no, no interest whatsoever. So how this arrived, not only how this arrived on my plate, but how it became a priority is still beyond me. What I want to talk about is, and get your input on, is I find myself doubting myself a little bit right now, like, who am I to write this book? You know, And I believe I have a lot to say. I'll share the construct with you, but I'm feeling like I should be running out of the gate right now, you know, full of knowledge and excitement about this. But for some reason, I am questioning, like, why am I doing this? Like, who am I to do this? I don't, I just want to talk that through with you. Mm-hmm. I want to talk that through. Mm-hmm. The construct of the book is I... What's on the construct of the book? I want, I want okay. to talk in more generic terms and then we'll, we'll see if we go into the details. Okay. You may not need it. Who's the book for? The book is for two populations. Chiefs of staff who are aspiring in the role and want to really level up their leadership skills and capabilities to serve their leader powerfully and the company mission. So that is one population. The other population is the senior leader who may or may not know how to get the best out of their chief, how to manage that relationship effectively, how to leverage it and ignite it. And so I think there is a reader from a leadership perspective to grab this book and understand what does, what does the chief need mm. to be lit up so they can literally you know, kill it in day one. It sounds like these are two books. They're two different audiences with two different premises, right? Two different sets of ideas, 
constructs, tools. Interesting. Didn't even think about it being two bu- books. I was thinking it would be one. But let's. Well, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm the CEO of a Fortune 10 company, the kind of people that you worked with, my time is extremely limited. Yeah. I, I want a book that I can read in an hour. Yeah. Or an airplane from DC to New York or whatever yeah. I'm going, but just I want an hour long book. It, it's got 60 pages, if that, but it's got three ideas that grab me. So I pick up the phone and I call you. Yeah. A friend of mine years ago wrote a book on leadership. Go on, what's that smile? You know, this is exactly why I want to talk with you because you have a way of just drilling right into something that already shifts my thinking. I have been thinking about this as one book. It's a series of interviews from 50 of the top chiefs of staff who serve powerful leaders in the world and teasing out their hacks and their greatness and their genius and their wisdom that enabled them to serve that leader powerfully. And, you know, I have always had a fashion fascination with what happens behind the curtain, who's making that thing great or that person great. I always know there's a story behind the story and I've done it. Mm. So that's the, that's the sort of driver behind this. But um, I never thought about this as two books. And so here in my struggle, my struggle was how do I write this and capture it in a way that both of those audiences want to read it? And, and you just said in a second, maybe this is two books. So you can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So why try? So what, what, I, what I suggest to you is go and interview those 50 leaders, but you're not putting those 50 interviews in a book because, so, so let me get this right. It, you're going to go and interview 50 chiefs of staff Correct. People who've been like you serving at the very highest level, some of the top leaders in the country, let alone the world. That's right. Distill those 50 pieces of wisdom into 10. Make this a book with 10 simple chapters, 10 ways to get the most out of your chief of staff. And maybe one of them is how to hire the best chief of staff on the planet. Interesting. But so you zoomed out and went to that level. Get it. Um, my construct so far has been. I want to gather all this content and I'll have a lot of it because I've got a series of 20 questions I'm asking each chief, everything from how important resilience is in the, in the role to um, how they influence through silos and functions when they don't take command or own the people, the direct reporting relationship. So I'm collecting all this data so that the book can be laid out and, and it will be topic driven. So for example, in the chapter for resilience, you might get quotes from the Google chief of staff, um, chiefs of staff in the military that serve, you know, the White House. Um, I was thinking of topic driven versus. So this sounds fascinating, mm. but I'm going to push you a little bit more, and you yeah. can push back. I'm, I'm trying to provoke oh, no, no, you please. and so on. Bring it on. Yeah, that is something fascinating to me, and I love the concept. It would be fascinating for me to immerse myself in a chat with you about this, but I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone running a Fortune 10 company. Mm. My time is limited. Mm. I don't want to spend time reading 50 different interviews. I want to find out what are the top 10 tips to get them, maybe five, to get the most out of my chief of staff or to hire the best chief of staff. That's it. That's all I need. I want a tiny book that I can read in an hour, maybe less. That's all I want. So, all right, let's go there. I like the idea of simplicity. You're spot on. That's how a senior leader would read anything, frankly. Um, Maybe it's not a book then. Maybe it's not a book then. Because I'm going to be a book. So the story I was going to tell you, years ago, a friend of mine wrote a book on leadership. And it's where I got the idea of what I call a million dollar book. Because he wrote a, a tiny book designed to be read on an airplane by a leader. And one company called, he was a consultant. One company called him and said, we like the book, come and talk to us. They hired him for a $250,000 consulting engagement, brought him back three more times. He made a million dollars from that one particular business. So when I published The Prosperous Coach, I had that in my, I want this to be a million dollar book. It was a fun idea behind what I did. I didn't do it the same way as him, but I, I had this intention. What if this is a million dollar book? And that's the proposal I have for you is, how, how'd you write a million dollar book? Well, well, there's two ways to do it. One is to go wide. You know, Prosperous Coach has sold 100,000 copies and brought me a lot of business. Uh, or you do what my friend did. Write a book 
that is for the 10 top CEOs on the planet. It's a tiny audience, but you only need two of them to engage you. And suddenly you've made a million dollars. So this is, this is great that we're playing with this because I should have said, I want to say right now, I'm not writing this for the money. It's a legitimizer to me and, and has me show up as a subject matter expert, a thought leader in this place. And so one of the questions that I sit with when I come to thinking about the book is, how do I weave my story and my wisdom into this book? So I'm going out to get all this content from people who I deeply respect. And I'm... Well, well, them. <laughs> so, so you really want me to provoke you? Because I, I had this thought in my mind earlier. Why are you wasting time interviewing these other chiefs of staff? Make this Laurie's book. This is your wisdom. Make this a tiny book with 10 pieces of wisdom that you have already. Don't worry about getting other people's advice. Now, now... There's one thought, and I can see that stirring your thinking already. That's the first one. This is Laurie's book. Write your book. So the reason why I've got a little gymnastics going on in my head is because I can't get, I haven't yet gotten a clear vision of what this construct looks like. And it feels like every time I talk to somebody, they're like, great, do this. And then it triggers five or six questions. Well, what would it look like? Well, why are you interviewing people? Why isn't it your story? Why don't you put your story in there with the interviews? Like, honestly, Rich, I think, is my story good enough? Or don't I want to bring in how other great people who have done this job? Um, I feel like that. Laurie, Laurie you're, I think you're asking the wrong question. Okay. Um, I say this with all due respect. And I say it with a sense of a smile on my face. Who cares about your story? Yeah. Now, what I mean by that is if I'm the CEO of one of the top firms on the planet, I don't care about Laurie's story. I just yeah. want to know, oh, so you were the former chief of staff at one of the biggest companies on the planet? Great. That's interesting to me. Now, what are five pieces of wisdom you have for me I can read in 20 minutes? Great. That's all I care about. Got it. That's really helpful. So, so the piece that I remembered I was going to say to you earlier is you, you've got to be careful who you're talking to. Because if you start talking to publishers or coaches who want to write a book, they start talking about how to go wide and how to sell books on Amazon. Laurie, your audience is tiny. You were the former chief of staff to a Fortune 10 company. If you expanded that to a Fortune 100, we're talking about 100 CEOs. You are writing a book for 100 people. No more. It's not a game that most people know or understand. So don't listen to what most people advise. It is that they're pointing in the wrong direction. How do you write a book that these hundred people pass around to one another? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Now we've got an interesting premise. Yeah, I really like that push because, I mean, you and I both know that it's not just in this discussion. It isn't going to be just a CEO who reads the book, but it'll be written for a leader that is employing a chief of staff, any leader that is No, I'm going to push you. I'm really going to push you on this one. Again, to be provocative, we don't have to, uh, I want to provoke your thinking. Okay. Let go of the need to go wide. It might well be something that goes wide later, but write the book that those hundred people need to read because there are distinctions and ways of being and, and ways of serving and being served that you have when you're one of those top Fortune 100 leaders. Mm -hmm. that you don't have if you're in the Fortune 500, let alone the Fortune 5,000 or, or, or small and medium-sized enterprises. Write that book for those 100 people. Do not try and add anything that makes it more generalizable to other people. Write the book for those 100 people. Make it as short as possible. Make it a white paper if you need to. Yeah. But write a tiny book. Yeah, I know you like airplane. I, I am so down with that. Keeping it easy, keeping it in bite-sized chunks. Um, I do like that push. So, so can we go to the next question then? I was saying, how do I weave? How do I or do I even weave like my story in here? Is this my story or is it just my distillation of these top ten things? Like. I guess I'm trying to. Yeah. So what you need is a story that has somebody go, wow, mm. in five seconds or less. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I if do... you were writing a book that we were trying to sell on Amazon and get to 
tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, you've got to tell a story. I worked at one of the biggest corporations on the planet. I flew on private jets around the world because I was doing things to take care of my boss that almost no one else on the planet can do. Do you have someone like that for you? If you don't, read these five points and call me because I can help. Mic drop. Yeah, I think, you know, this is the book that I wish I had when I started the role. And and somebody asked me, why are you doing this? Because there isn't a book like this out there. Well, so what you just described is a different book. What you just described is a book for the senior chiefs of staff who are stepping into the most senior role they've ever had. Now they're working for one of the Fortune 100 leaders. What do you need to do differently? What distinctions do you have as you start to play this game? It's a different book. It's another tiny book. They also are incredibly busy people. They, they might have a little bit more time, but not a lot. I imagine you, your time was extremely limited when you were a chief of staff at that level. Um, you know, day one, what do you do on day one when you're a chief of staff to one of the top leaders on the planet? What do you do in the first 90 days? Yeah. What do yeah. you do in the first year? That's it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I coach on, right? So I coach chiefs of staff and senior leaders. But when I'm working with the chiefs, they all want to know, how do I, it's, an, it's typically an 18 month assignment and you break it into parts and there's certainly you know, segments of what you do and when you do it, but um, they all want to know how to do it and how to do it without it being a training ground because no one takes the chief role as a training ground. That is not what the role is. You're expected to hit the ground running. You're expected to know what to do. And you're working 24 by seven, putting work before family. And I dare say that in today's pandemic, but it's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I, so I think that's a great the, title for that book, Hit the Ground Running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hit the Ground Running, How to Be a Chief of Staff on Day One for a Fortune 100 Leader. Yeah. 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 Maybe I was trying to get, I was, I have a whole list of, of titles that I'm playing with and I think I'm trying to get too cutesy here. I can tell because there's a little creative bug in me. I've got like. Titles come last. They're the last thing you ever write. Don't, don't write the title first. Oh, really? Oh uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The titles always come last. Yeah. Interesting. All right. All right. Well, look, I've still got, um, I've, I've got 50 chiefs of staff that I have invited for an interview already. That, that bus has left the station. So that work is underway. I've not committed to how I'm going to package it all together, but I'm well down the path. So be careful. Mm. Just because you started the ball rolling doesn't mean you have to keep it rolling. Mm. But now, you could write this book for, well, you, you know, which is the audience you want to write to first? Because there are two separate books here. And, and do you want to write the book for the, the leaders of these top companies or the Chiefs of staff who are stepping into that leadership role? Are the former. I mean, I'm presenting on that now and meeting with different leadership teams and talking about it. It's content crafted for the most part. So that is a really good push. Right. And I haven't thought about it that way. So I will. Write that book now. And, yeah. and, and, and we can do it in this moment. What are the top three challenges that senior leaders, like the leader of a Fortune 10 company has? That, that the chief of staff is going to help with? What are the first top three? Well, the, fir- the first one would be, um, they. do you want me to state the problem that they're the having? That they would t- if, if we brought in right now as an interview, the three of us, someone who's running AT&T or another company like that, is it, what are the three biggest challenges you need help on? What are they going to say? First one they're going to say is, I'm experiencing competing demands. I'm being pulled in every direction. I am leading my employees, I am leading my clients, and I have no time to do what I need to do to run this business. Right. What's number two? Number two is I do not have someone in my orbit who is challenging my thinking, helping me with my blind spots, and acting as my proxy, someone in my corner. I don't have that resource. And what's number three? Number three would be, um, I don't have the space to freely ideate, work through 
issues, critical matters for fear of being judged or pressured because everybody wants me to have the answers all the time. So I can't actually just brainstorm (laughs) and I don't have that resource. So these are just some of the problems that leaders face that it's in a different way. What, how would they, how would they say that? I just want to hear that in a different way so I can capture that. That is one more time. The last one. I don't have space to freely brainstorm and ideate areas that are important to this business for fear of being judged or pressured. I don't have that space. Okay. So here, here what, here's what I hear, three chapter titles. And I love the idea of a chapter title being the secret thought in the head of the person who's going to read that book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Chapter one, I'm tired of being pulled in every direction. Chapter two, I'm sick of yes people. Chapter three, I'm frustrated. I have no space to think. Yeah. Yeah. Tired, yeah. sick, and frustrated. <laughs> Absolutely. And you've just captured three of the biggest challenges that they have. Yeah. So, so let me plant something here for us to play with. So there, we could be speaking to a leader who doesn't have a chief and needs to be convinced to hire a chief, or we could be speaking to a leader that has a chief and that chief is not affected. It's still the same investment in me. Right, right. So, so chapter four is, I haven't got the title and I haven't got a sexy title coming yet, but it will, it will come. But it, it's chapter four is I've got a chief of staff. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're not, they're not helping. And chapter five is how do I find someone like that? Yeah. 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 That's it. Five chapters. Write those five chapters. Write the three biggest pain points. Write the chapter for the person who's the chief of staff who's not really helping. And write the chapter for the chief of staff. Who, the person who needs a chief of staff doesn't even know where to start. There you go. That's the beginning of the book. It might be, that might be the book. That's cool. That's really cool. I hope you're recording this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take notes because I want to be fully present. Yeah. Um, and so the outcome, so why, what would a leader get by doing all of these things? They get back hours in their, they get back hours every day in their week to work on the things that matter most. They get that space back to freely ideate on critical matters. They have a thought partner, someone to challenge them that they trust, a confidant, a conciliary, and they feel like they're supported, like there's someone in their corner. And you know, that saying that it's lonely at the top, and it is. Um, so, so this, I, this is what's going to go into, you're starting to create the chapters right now. Each chapter started out with a feeling. I'm sick, I'm tired, I'm frustrated. Those are the feelings, that, and I'm lonely, right? There's, there's, there's a chapter about loneliness. Put that in too. Sick, tired, and frustrated, um, and lonely. Write about the pain, and then add the solution. Okay. Yeah. You're surrounded by yes people. Yeah, you need one person who you trust so much that they're willing to say exactly what you need to you need to hear. Kings and queens of old used to have a court jester. Now we think a jester is the person who plays around with a funny hat and bells on a stick, but actually a jester was supposed to make say the things that no one else could say to the leader. They said it in a funny way. Like, so high level leaders for centuries have had someone, one person who they can trust conciliary and if you're in the mafia you know it, it, there's you need someone you can trust and then you write about that role write about the role write about where to find them because i don't believe in looking in the obvious places i think i personally think the best talent in a chief role is found in unexpected places that people don't obviously look so i can include some of that in the book as well yeah absolutely don't shrug as you say that there's a chapter called unexpected places yeah and now we've got a what's because I like intriguing titles, Unexpected Places, what's that? Yeah, you, you're not going to find uh, on, on Indeed, um, uh, uh, whatever it's called, the, the, the recruitment website. No, this is not monster.com. <laughs> yeah. A great chat. Yeah. So let's, let's pause and take stock. We just crafted out a book for 100 people. Mm-hmm. When you write it, have in mind your former boss or someone that you know like him and write to that person. Write a book for one person. 
Yeah, that's a good lens. That's that's helpful because I very quickly move into overwhelm. And when I move into overwhelm, I can't see it clearly. So I really like that mindset. I really like that push. And if I do that, when I do that, I can probably write with abandon. I won't have, I won't feel stymied as if I'm writing because a massive group of people are going to see it because then my perfectionist tendencies pop in and that's not going to serve me here. Okay. So to slow this down, Mm. what we've got here is the potential for two books, but you can only do them one at a time. The one that excites you the most is not the one for potential uh, uh, chiefs of staff and those ones who are just starting in a new role. It's the one for these leaders. Mm -hmm. And we said, let's target 100, the Fortune 100 leaders. And how Mm -hmm. do you do that? You pick one who you know extremely well. And then because you know that person so well, once it's written, you could say, hey, can I run this by you? What do you think? What have I missed? Wow. So interesting thought. Let's put a pin in that for a minute. In the construct of the book that I was planning about 30 minutes ago, um, I was collecting all this content from chiefs and there's space at the end of every chapter for the quote, a quote from the CEO or the senior leader that's managing that chief. The question is, what did you appreciate and value most in this chief as they served you? And I wanted the voice of the leaders in the book for credence, for credibility, to, for the, you know, the real life verbatim on what served that leader. What are your thoughts on that? Does that add, is it additive? Yeah, yeah look, th- there's a place for that. You know, I suggest if you're going to do these interviews, make them 10 minute interviews. I've got two questions for you. Really? Yeah. Well, you save quest- yourself hours of time and look for the, the highest leverage question you've got. Uh, you know, What's the one piece of advice you would give to a Fortune 10 leader on how to f- hire the best chief of staff on the planet? That's it. One, one, one question. It will, it, you'll get more yeses because they'll like, oh, I'll do a 10-minute interview. I've got one. You're going to ask me one question. That'd be great. And then at some point, you'll go back to those people and say, hey, I've written the book. I've quoted you in it. I'd love to share it with you. Would you be willing to make get an endorsement? Give me an endorsement. But that will come later. Build, build a connection, build a relationship, ask a single question, save yourself and them a lot of time. Don't worry about trying to fill it up with all, all this information. You've got the information you need already. And as mm. you do these 50 interviews, you'll get a few other distinctions and you'll put that in there too. And you're saying just kind of whisper, pepper them in throughout the book. I'm, not, I'm saying don't even worry about that for now. You, okay, just know. select the content. Yeah, you'll, just- you'll realize, oh, these three I've got. You know, doesn't add anything to what I'm saying already. Why add someone else's name to what I'm saying? And then you'll get one that's like, oh my God, I never thought of that. Absolutely spot on. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to quote. Yeah, there's no, there's no commitment I'm making that I will use every interview. I got you. Um, I really like this. I feel more clear now than I did before. It can't, again, it can get very overwhelming because as an Enneagram one, no, my- Domain don't, don't, don't is complex. Let's make it simple. Yeah, that's what I mean. You are writing a book for one person. I've helped you draw out the first three chapters, the first five chapters. Yeah. Three of them are the thoughts, the most uncomfortable pain point in this leader's head. Yeah. Yeah. And two of them are two of the issues they have. Either you don't yet have a chief of staff and you need one, or you got the wrong one. Write those five chapters. Make them really simple. Dive into the pain and then give the solution. Each chapter... Here's what I'm going to challenge you. Each chapter should have uh, two to three pages on the pain and two to three pages on the, maybe one to two on the pain and two to three on the solution. It's a short book. Yeah. It's a tiny book. Um, Love this. Great direction. Shall we do the same thing for the chief of staff book? Um, I'm going to say with, with my tongue firmly planted in my cheek, I don't know. I don't care. Write this book first. You will get overwhelmed by this. Write this book. You might discover, oh, I love writing books. I can't wait to write the next one. You might discover, I don't like writing books. I'm going back to speaking and connecting. Who okay. knows? Like, put enough. it on hold. Put it on ice. Don't, don't th- throw it away. But, but just don't worry about it for now. Make this, put your attention on this. One project, a book for one person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I challenge you to write this by the 31st of May. Are you serious? You're lucky I was going to say, I was going to give you 30 days. I've given you 60 days. 
Well, yeah. look, I mean, I, I, I certainly can make- The reason I'm saying this, Laurie, is that you're going to get in your head. You're going to try editing while you write. Give me a crappy first draft by the end of May. So that means all these interviews have to get done before May. Nope. Nope. Write the okay. book by the end of May. You might do a single interview by then. You might do 10. You might do none. Don't mm -hmm. worry about that. Write the book. You could write this book. You don't even want to give you advice. You already told me the three biggest issues that, that, that these chiefs, yeah. that these leaders face and the two problems that go behind them. They've either got the wrong person in place. Or they don't have the person in place. You know what's going on. Write your book. And then okay. later, you can look at it and go, oh, I need to flesh this one out. I haven't got enough on this one. And it'll be like, oh, that'll be the question you ask. Okay. You go, it will come. Write yeah. this book. You've, yeah. got, you've got two months or less to write these chapters, five chapters. Each chapter has two pages on the problem and three pages on the solution. That's it. Mm -hmm. Easy for you to say, but I love the challenge. I love the challenge. This is this is the clarity I was looking for. I love the challenge. That's awesome. And you've now made it easy, which is really what I needed. I needed that clarity of thought. I needed to see this in a linear way. I was in my own way. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. You got this. Thank you. Thank you. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching, it was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.